After a long dry summer and an autumn that never really seemed to arrive, it finally feels like things are starting to change. The leaves are beginning to turn and we've had some more rain. The land kind of feels like it's coming back to life at the same time as it feels like it's slowly lying down to rest. The nights are longer than the days now and I really notice that difference since so much of what I do is outside. I've been really enjoying getting outside early and savouring these fresh cold mornings. It's been a really long time since we've had mornings like this. The bright cold days are the best when the skies are blue and you can stand in the sun and feel its warmth on your skin but there's a chill in the air. It's so much easier to work outside on days like this. Just moving about is enough to keep you warm and you soon find yourself stripping off all the layers you put on in the morning. I'm still working on the wood store, it's just become a kind of obsession at this point. Even though we don't need the extra storage space, I just really want to see it finished because I've been working on it for so long. It always surprises me how the jobs I put off for ages thinking they're going to be a pain are often the ones that turn out to be surprisingly quick and simple and just get done in a few hours when it comes to it. And then the jobs that I think are going to just be a weekend end up taking me months and that's what's going on with this wood store. It's just one of those things that you get better at estimating with experience I guess but yeah I honestly thought this wood store was maybe a two weekend job at most when I started it back in September and here we are now. As usual there is no plan here or there was a plan but it's changed so I've decided to do this final end well that's the other thing this is now the final end of the wood store I was planning to add another section this size here which we've just about got space for but I was just looking at it and thinking this is probably enough space for wood actually so I think we're gonna stop it here but since we've got this little kind of two meter section at the end which I was kind of just planning on having like a long wall of storage for wood along here i think i still want to make like an extra little section on the end but it's going to be like a garden tool and odd bits and pieces storage and it's going to be fully like enclosed from the elements so i'm going to put like solid paneling with pallet pieces all around it that's what's going on here since this is going to be like the first wall of this little box on the end it's getting like a full side of panel Okay, this is just pure laziness. I've had this wine fermenting for about a month, maybe more. No. But it was only supposed to be like fermenting aerobically for about two weeks and then we were supposed to press it and anaerobically ferment it further, which is what we did with a big vat of wine. And I just didn't do that. <laughs> so it's still all in here with the grape skins and the stalks and everything and it smells kind of whiny but it also maybe smells vinegary it's probably not good wine at this stage Mauro can try some if he wants it's more vinegar than wine yeah but sure. we're gonna do something with it anyway well we do consume a lot of vinegar yeah. so actually i did take a scoop of this the other day just with a cup and i made a gravy with it and it was really nice it so. was actually the best gravy <laughs> it was a really ever. good gravy it was the best gravy so. we had I think what we're going to do is just press it, save whatever liquid there is as vinegar in these bottles and treat it as vinegar. I think the main reason I didn't do anything with this for so long is because I just couldn't be bothered to like press it in the big press because there's such a small quantity. In fact, I didn't even think that like the 
to squish a bit of the press would go down far enough to squish what there is if yeah. you know what i mean it would so be this i just tall didn't really know press. what to do so so and the press is like this tall so and you we need, need a like, lot of yeah. pieces of wood that we don't have so yeah so not knowing what to do about that i just didn't do anything for ages and yeah so now we're here and i think we're just going to use a sieve to try and kind of press it see how it goes see how it goes yeah Sorry. You're so impatient. <laughs> I just want to squish some. Oh, oh wow, we already, we already filled three litres. Can I taste it? Yeah. Do you want me to get you a little glass? I think you need a, I think you need a full mouthful to really yeah. savour it. Let me get you a glass. Here you go. Do you want to try some? <laughs> How is it? Like, it's in between. Like, mm. it's still drinkable, but it's not good wine. Okay. So as a as a wine, it's just weak vinegar, and as vinegar, it's a bit whiny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we've just made in then. in between. It's not yeah, disgusting. Yeah. I could drink more. Well, it makes good gravy. <laughs> yeah, I think for cooking. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's just well, in between cooking with vinegar and wine. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, I normally like. I normally I'm not a huge fan of gravy, and the last time we had it was actually really nice. So mm -hmm. whatever this does, it's <laughs> the right thing. Well, I've made a bit of a mess of this one, but that's okay because all of these splintered bits I can use for firewood because I've seen that this particular palette has a symbol on it that says it's just been heat treated. So it's got no nasty chemicals or anything. So I'm happy to burn this wood and it burns really well, actually. So thank you to everyone who pointed out that most palettes will have some sort of code on them like this, which tells you what they might have been treated with to preserve them.
So this is what I was building yesterday. This is a shelf. It's the first kind of prototype that I just wanted to try. I'm pretty happy with it. I just need to buy like a tint for it, stain it like a darker color. But yeah, this is basically what I'm going for and I'm gonna be making about eight more of these. So why am I making shelves? Well, with the change in weather lately, we've actually been struggling a little bit. It's been a lot colder recently, the last few days. Actually, it's pretty warm today, but we have had a lot of days of rain and wind, cold wind, and it's just so cold in the stone house. And that's been really tough for Mauro who's sitting in there working not moving all day that's what I was struggling with last year as well last year I was in the exact same position I was here on my own and I was working all day and the place where we've got like a little office space is in this little corridor which is super drafty and it's just really cold in there it doesn't matter even on a quite warm day like today it's still really cold inside the house and it it feels cold when you're not moving so it's just it's just quite tough and melro has worse circulation than me so he's suffering even more this little space where we've got the desk is really the only space we can kind of fit a desk and it just happens to be in this corridor that that is drafty none of the doors seal properly and even if we have the fire on the fire really only heats the living room it doesn't really heat this little corridor and it actually just sucks cold air from the outside through this corridor in a stream and you're just sitting in a current of cold air when you have the fire on so having a fire isn't really an option so we're struggling to heat that space basically and stay warm during the day so where am I going with this anyway yeah these shelves I'm making these shelves because we're going to put a lot of effort into this little office space I think what I'm going to try and do is close it up seal it and make it like a little boxing cubicle that way we can heat just that little space we can maybe bring a small like gas heater in there and just heat that little box and not try and heat the whole house when you really only need like a small space to be heated during the day so I'm going to put curtains big thick heavy curtains to separate that space from the pantry I'm going to probably try and build like a sliding door um, to separate that space from the living room and seal it in and since we're working on that room I thought it would be nice to all around the room put shelves because we're really low on storage space anyway and if it's going to be an office shelves are a nice thing to have in an office and that's pretty much the only thing I can do right now because I'm waiting for material for the curtains I'm waiting for the next time we go to the city to buy stuff for the sliding door um, but yeah the shelves are something I can do so that's what I've been doing I was planning to glue these pieces of wood together with some wood glue and clamp them into place and then put like a little bit of wood across the bottom to actually keep them in position but I think I'm gonna forget about the wood glue because the bits of pallet that I've chosen are actually they've actually got like notches out of them and they're not perfectly they don't lie flat against each other which I chose on purpose because I really like the detail and I think it'll look cool but <laughs> they actually don't lie flat so I can't really glue them but I don't think that matters. I'm just going to cut some of this. Wow, this is really cool. This is the first time I've ever sanded anything with like an actual sander. So this is really exciting and it's so good. It's kind of scary to use. I don't really like using this angle grinder, but it's kind of the only way to do it, I think. The corners are kind of hard. I want to get like a nice rounded corner all the way around, but um, that's a bit tricky. Obviously, I don't have a proper workbench or anything or really a way to like secure this in place which is making it a bit harder but so yeah this is my first prototype of a shelf and I'm gonna sand the other side as well somehow 
Okay, so after a full morning's work, I finally got all the pieces for all the shelves that I want to make, plus the original shelf over there. It took me ages to find the right size pieces of pallet wood that would add up to 25 centimeters for every shelf because I was working with random pallets and I broke lots of pieces, so it was kind of hard to get everything to match up how I wanted, but I've got it all now, so I'm going to join them all together. A little while ago I noticed some chives growing randomly in a little corner of the finca so I decided to dig them up, divide them and plant them somewhere a bit more convenient. I also noticed a couple of rows of what I think is called three-cornered leek growing in one of our main fields. It's a plant that's kind of like chives except the leaves, which are the part you eat, are flat instead of circular. Like chives, they have a garlicky taste, maybe slightly stronger, and it grows in clumps like this, which are also super easy to divide. I actually found this plant growing in rows, which is kind of cool, because it shows where it used to be cultivated in the past. This whole field actually used to be like a traditional vegetable field, ploughed and planted in rows. You can see that still on Google Maps. In the first year, I found one or two pepper plants and some pumpkins growing in a rough kind of row, I guess self-seeded from years before. Um, I haven't found anything this year or since, but there is still this row of three-cornered leek as a kind of testament to what this field used to be. As with the chives, I thought the three-cornered leek would be better off somewhere else um, where I can actually take care of it and it's not just lost amongst all the weeds and the grass. So I dug up the biggest clumps to transplant into my garden beds. I planted a mixed row of chives and three-cornered leek along the edge of the new canal that I've been digging since nothing's really growing there at the moment and I could imagine a fragrant edible border of chives being quite attractive there. And then as for the rest I just dotted them all over the place in various garden beds. Mauro has come to see his shelves, what do you think? They're awesome, I, I really like this style of being a bit like rounded, irregularly rounded, it looks really cool. <laughs> irregularly, yeah I was going for that. <laughs> yeah, no what I mean is that it's nice that they're no, not like straight like perfect lines, it, it just looks nicer, it's more rustic which is, it suits the house, so yeah. I really like them. <laughs> okay I've done like half, no a bit more than half of the shelves, um, which is good because I'm not sure how much 
is left of this sander disc. I should have thought maybe I might need more than one. I don't know. It just seems like it's kind of starting to almost like burn the edge of some of this wood instead of sand it. Um, smells a bit burny. I don't know. I have to ask someone what they think about that. But yeah, I'm kind of getting the hang of the edges now. Um, it's a bit tricky, mostly just because of the working conditions and trying to keep the wood secure. But yeah, the edges are getting kind of rounder and I've got a bit of a better idea of what I'm doing. So yeah, let's just do the last three. That is it, that's the last one. Oh, my hands are vibrating and aching and my back is aching. I really need a workbench. But I'm really happy with them. Um, sanding them is really cool. It's just amazing to see the transformation of the pallet wood from wood that looks kind of, well, the bottom side. I haven't actually bothered to sand all the bottom bits because I don't think it really matters. But yeah, it's amazing to see it turn from kind of rough, slightly moldy, dirty wood into something that looks half decent. So I'm really happy with this and I'm really looking forward to putting them up. Anyway, I think that's gonna be it for this video um, because it's nearly the end of the week and I need to start making it. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.